Sundara Chola was very surprised. Who is coming down from the loft like that through the edge of the pillars? Why come? I remembered the disturbing dreams I had had all this time. Is this also the appearance of a dream? Still not well awake from his slumber? Sundara Chola closed his eyes again to clear this doubt. He stayed like that for a minute and opened his eyes wide to see the direction the figure had landed. There is nothing there now. Aha! That appearance must be just an illusion. He remembered what happened before he fell asleep. The Prime Minister and his disciple and the daughter of Tyagavidankar, who sang in a sweet voice, seem to have gone after their sleep. Malayaman's daughter and nurses are waiting in the next room as usual. The Emperor was a little upset as he remembered that he had complained to the Prime Minister about Kundave. Kundave has unparalleled knowledge and forethought. She has made the prince stay in Nagapatanam so that there is no confusion in the kingdom. It was his fault for mistaking it. Sundara Chola had known for some time that his knowledge was not in the right condition. Then, what is the use of getting angry with the younger brother? It is better to do anything according to her idea. Now the important thing to do is to bring the prince from Nagapatanam. God! He should not be in any danger from the storm. You should ask your fellow squatters about it. Sundara Chola thought of clapping his hand to call the people in the next room. But what is this? It looks like someone is walking around in his head. But the footsteps are very slow, sounds like the movement of animals like cats, tigers etc. Who would it be? Perhaps the daughter of a Malayan? His daughter? A nurse? Do they walk so slowly as not to disturb their sleep? Who is that? Sundara Kalar asked in a low voice and there was no answer. Who is that? Come forward like this. He said in a slightly louder voice to which there was no response. Sundara Chola had an idea. It confused and horrified him. Maybe she is. Could it be her spirit? Kiridaki, who appeared in a dream, has now come in person? Did you arrive in the evening before midnight or as a dress ornament? Or maybe it's midnight. Have you slept that long? Maybe that's why Malayaman's daughter and his daughter are not here? Did the nurses fall asleep? Alas! Why did they leave me alone? If that Badaki is Karayar's daughter, won't she leave me alone? Won't you go until your heart sinks? Primitive. If it's really you, come in front of me and get away. Torture me as much as you want. Why are you taking my life without being seen? Come forward. Have you come to ask for a blood sacrifice? Come. Come. Do you have a knife in your lap? Kill me with the same sword that tigers kill bears and go away. Just don't do anything to my people. Do not take revenge on them for my crime. They did not betray you. What did I betray you? Did I tell you to climb the top of the lighthouse and fall into the sea to die? Why are you torturing me for that horrible thing you did? Sundara Chola recently felt a figure standing on his head. His body trembled with horror. It was as if the intestines had climbed up from the stomach and blocked the chest. The chest rises and closes the throat. It was as if the eyelids would pop out. No doubt she is coming. It is her spirit that comes and stops. As he thought, he has finally come to take blood revenge. He is going to kill himself by stabbing himself in the chest. Or is he going to kill himself by slitting his throat with his bare hands, or what? Let her wish come true somehow. It is of no use to anyone that he lives any longer. Wouldn't that demon leave his people without doing anything if he took his revenge and left? It seemed to Sundara Chola that if he looked up a little more, he could see the spirit form of Mandakanip Bay. It was as if the figure had arrived in Talamat so recently. Even its shadow seemed to fall on his face. He tried to look up for a moment but didn't have the courage. I'll close my eyes tight. Let it do what it's doing, he decided, closing his eyes. He stayed like that for a while, he didn't get a sharp knife in his chest like he expected. He was not restrained by two ghostly hands grabbing his throat. The figure at his head seemed to have moved away. Aga, 
Karayar's daughter will not let me go so easily. How long will she keep me alive and torture me? Today it seems as if it has gone back without catching my eye. Okay, okay, let's call someone. If someone came into this room, she would disappear even though she might still be here. Who's there? Where did you all go? Sundara Chola opened his eyes shouting loudly. Aha! Who is standing opposite him, lower down on the couch? She is no doubt, it is the ghost of the mute, the ghost standing in the head. His forehead is bleeding. I came for blood revenge. That seems to say. Sundara Chola, seeing the apparition like a madman, cried out in a loud voice. It's not going to work anymore. Hit Patejai. Why are you still looking at me as if you are tearing my heart apart? Go. Go. Won't you go? Won't you go? Here I am making you go. Saying this, Sundara Chola saw what object was within arm's reach of him. A gall lamp made of puncha metals was the only such thing that was available. Taking it, he said, Go. Go, demon. Screaming, Mandakini threw the ghost at his face. Like a chakra weapon thrown by Thirumal, the lamp burst into flames and flowed towards the female figure. Then Sundara thought that the Chola was a ghost and a voice came out of the mouth of the woman. Sundara Chola's seven nadis, contracted in his body, flesh and bones and the life within the bones froze. The lamp did not fall on the figure's face. Just before it fell on the ground and rolled, it made a loud sound tanang tanang. Although the Akal lamp had gone out, fortunately another lamp was burning on the other side of the room. Sundara Chola peered into its dim light and saw the spirit form of Mandakini still standing there. An indescribable look of agony appeared on its face for a moment. Then it looked at Sundara Chola one last time with immense apprehension and turned and tried to leave. It was at that time that a doubt first arose in Sundara Chola's heart. Is this the spirit form of Mandakini? Or another woman who looks exactly like her? A twin sister with her? Or maybe, just maybe, she is? Isn't she dead? Are you still alive? Everything he thought was wrong? If it was her, how cruel that he took the lamp and threw it at her. Had the pity seen on her face a moment ago changed to an indescribable anguish? Was she pained by his cruelty? Aha! Uh -huh. There she tries to go back. She looks which way to go. Woman! Are you Manthakini, the daughter of Carrier? Or her spirit form? Or her sister born to her? Stop, stop! Don't go! Tell the truth and go! While Sundara Chola was shouting in a loud voice, many people entered the room stumbling. Sundara Chola knew in a moment that Malayaman's daughter, Kundave, Vanati, Punguzali, the chief minister and his disciple were all coming into the room. Stop! Stop her from running away! Ask her who she is and why! Sundara Kalar screamed. All those who came inside stood stunned for a moment. Sundara Chola's frenzied countenance and the terror in his shrieking voice caused them panic. Seeing Goddess Mandakini there made them awestruck. Everyone stood motionless for a while not knowing what to do. Prime Minister Anuradha somehow realized what the situation was and how it could have happened. He looked at the flower girl and said, Woman! Is this your aunt? Said. Yes, sir. Said Punghuali. Tirumala. Why are you standing like a tree? Goddess Mandakini is trying to run away. Stop her, Emperor's order. Said. For the first time in his life all were Kadi and disobeyed the Guru's orders. Sir! Command me to hold back the storm rather than that! He said. Meanwhile, Pungujali was not idle. She ran and grabbed her aunt's shoulder. Mandakini pushed her away and ran away. All were Kadi and suddenly did something. He went to the door where the chief minister and others had entered and completed it. Then he stood with his arms outstretched so that no one could open the door. Mandakini woke up in fright, looking all around like a deer surrounded by vultures. She decided that there was no other way to escape but to go up the way she had come down. 
The others also knew her intent from her glance upstairs. Sundara Chola said, Seize her. Seize her. Ask her why she has come and whom she has come to avenge. He shouted more. Funga Jalai again ran close to Goddess Mandakini, who was ready to go up to the upper floor through the pillar. This time instead of stopping her, Punghuali signalled with her hand and tried to say something. Mandakini pointed to the fallen Agal lamp as if she knew its meaning. Kundeva, who was observing this, said, Father. Did you take the lamp and throw it on Pariyama? She asked. Yes, daughter. I couldn't stand the look the ghost gave me. So I took the lamp and threw it. Said Sundara Kalar. Father. Not a ghost, not a ghost, only a living matter a sea. Father. Grandmother never died. Listen to the Prime Minister. He will tell you everything. Kuntave said that and looked at the scene where Mandakini and Pungazalai were having a silent argument. She immediately rushed to that place. Daughter. Don't go to her. That giantess will do something to you. Sundara Kalar shouted and tried to get up from the bed to stop the squatting. Malayaman's daughter Vanamadavi held his shoulders with support and made him lean on the bed. Lord. Wait a minute. Their daughters are in no danger. She said.